So here we are once again. Today I'm going to be using a Dremel 4000 with a Dremel flex shaft and the cuts all carving bits. If you want to get these cuts all bits, go to the description below. Use code CFUSION, save yourself 5%. Today I'm going to be carving an incense burner. You know, you got these long stick type. I picked this up from the dollar store. It was like uh, $1.75. Or you got the cone types. Okay. So these cone types... It can eat the, the smoke can either go up or it can go down backflow. To make it a backflow incense burner, you need to have a hole in the bottom up and through. And then the smoke, you can uh, do the, the backflow incense burner so the smoke burns down. So, but today we're going to focus on doing one for these. Um, these are great gifts. Christmas is coming soon. It's just around the corner. And no, I have not forgotten Remembrance Day, but it's... it's um, Good to uh, get ahead of the game. So what I'm going to do with this piece of cottonwood bark, I'm going to, um, it's a pretty solid piece. I can see it's checked here a few places, like cracked all the way through. But what I'm going to do first is use my Fordham. This is a quarter inch burr, a lot bigger than the Dremel ones. I'm going to run around and clean up this whole piece because I'm going to carve this whole piece of wood today. So, you know, like if you got a branch that has bark on it and you're going to carve the whole piece... I suggest you run around and clean the whole thing up first because with this bark, I just pretend it's, with this bark, I pretend this gray stuff is the, um, well, is the bark of the wood. So anyways, I'm going to run around, clean this up, not going to film, and then we're going to carve on, draw on some trees and maybe a river or a wood spirit. Okay, so there you can see I got the uh, wood cleaned up pretty good. I did find a little surprise right there. That's just a little crack in there. No big deal. Because we're going to have two separate trees. So, like I said, if you got a tree with bark on it, you want to carve the whole piece. It's, it's better to remove the bark first. It kind of sucks, I know, but um, it pays off in the long run. I also cleaned up another one. This one I found beachcombing the other day. What do you guys see on that? You can't tell me you don't see an owl on the right there on a tree. So... Yeah, I might carve this one today too, and don't know if I'll have time to film, but another thing I want to say about these incense thing, you're dealing with fire, so do it at your own risk, please, and be very careful. The last thing I'd want you to do is burn your house down or burn your shop down or burn somebody's house down that you gift this to with um, fire, so make sure you, it's, this is not going to catch fire, simple as that. So here's your incense thing. This, these ones are from the dollar store, so they might be a bit shorter. I'm not too sure. These things stink. I'm not a fan of, of these things, these incense things. They all got the same kind of incense smell. So I've made my own ones. These ones are cedar and um, I forget what I mixed it with. Uh, patchouli. Cedar and patchouli. So these ones uh, smell a lot better than the ones you get from the... Um, store from the hippie store or whatever it is not that i have anything against hippies so you want this to stick up like this kind of thing right and you want to have a channel in here for the ashes to catch does that make sense to you right so what i think like when i seen this crack in here I, it didn't bother me too much because my idea is i'm going to have i know i talk lots but i need to explain what i'm doing right and hopefully it will give you guys ideas because that's all these videos are about is ideas. So I want to have a tree up this side and a tree up this side. I'm even going to paint the trees green. We'll put some texture in it. So let me get the camera in the overhead. We'll draw the trees on, carve the trees in. I haven't decided what I'm going to do up here yet because you got to think this thing's going to leave gray ashes. So they got to be able to dump it. They got to be able to dump it out, right? So do I want to put a wood spirit? In here like I've done these before the incense burners so there's a wood spirit here and then his mustache will come down one side come down another side and this thing sticks up here and catches in between his mustache but this time it's gonna be trees nothing needs to make sense it's art right so who knows maybe I'll put a river down in here I don't care do you care okay so drawing out these trees one on each side um, they're gonna kind of overlap at the bottom so let's see here. I'll just sit down. We're going to start off with a pencil. Trees can come to about, actually, let's just, this is a little bit wet here. This is a piece of driftwood too. I know it's driftwood, how flat and smooth the back is like that. And it's been cleaned up from the, uh, from the water. So 
Well, pencil's not going to work. Let's see if this pen works. Boom, we got a working pen. Unbelievable. So, our trees here, let's see. It's this kind of a little bit tricky. Not really, so we'll put a center line for each tree. Okay, so there's center line. And it's like the tree is extended off here, but it just, you know, it's like a picture that extends, but it's just cut off, right? So, see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Okay, so this one here, put a center line for a tree too. Could have done blowing trees. You know, and also the trees, even for chainsaw carving, the bottom of the tree, you know, see how that's straight? It's good to give them a nice swoosh in there. So it's like nice and a curve in there, not just so straight. But these ones might be straight. That's okay. Okay, so there's that. Our stalks. We can do something maybe down here in the stalks, something a little bit different later on. Okay, so tree, trunk, tree, trunk. Now what I got to do is I got to go along and hollow out, actually, this tree. Let's give this, let's make them a bit, let's make them a bit windy trees. Yeah, it's got a little bit of curve to the top. Because you got to have it, it's got to be, these trees are going to act like edges so the ashes catch inside the, the edges of the trees. So very good. Okay. So what I showed you guys earlier is I got the Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr. This is a quarter inch. All right. Sorry. This is a one eighth burr. That's what fits inside your Dremel flex shafts is the one eighth burrs. You can get different colors, but everything I use is one eighth. All right. So you can get these in my Cutsall store listed down below, or you can also get these on Amazon. Also, in our group on Facebook, Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers, there's a girl in Alaska. Her name's Angel. She sells beautiful bark. It's a lot nicer than this stuff. She sells beautiful bark. So I'll leave her email below. You can reach out to her and say, I don't make this, I don't make anything from it. She sends me some bark once in a while so I can show in the videos. I got access to tons of bark where I live in British Columbia, Canada. So, but uh, I'll leave her email listed below so you can get the chance to carve bark because bark is super soft wood to carve. It's not even wood, it's bark. It's super soft to carve and it holds great detail. And the stuff that she has is amazing stuff. It's super soft, but hard at the same time and holds detail, like totally awesome. And what you can use half a branch for this uh, incense burner too, just like get a, get a branch split in half so it's got a flat back, okay? And why I'm using this bark for this incense burner, because this stuff doesn't burn very well. So this stuff smokes more than anything when you put it on a fire, even if it's bone dry. It does burn, but it just smokes a lot. So, you know, I'm going to put lots of clear coat on this when it's done. So, you know, this, say if a hot burning amber falls off onto this into here, it's not going to start burning wood. It's It's got to go through a layer of plastic first, if that makes any sense. So once again, if you want to get this bark, just I don't care how long this video is. Go to the description below. You'll see Angel's email. Or if you're in the group on Carving Fusion, okay, the group on Facebook is called Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. She's in that group too. You can message her there or just say, who knows how to get a hold of Angel. Okay, so here's what I come up with. Here's a channel for the uh, incense thing. Before I go on, a good reminder, if you're going to do these incense thing, keep on measuring, you know, like when you're doing your carving. Keep on, like, stop, you know, relax. Put your incense thing in there. See how it um, fits. So this is pretty good so far. You're going to have to drill a little screw hole, a little hole down in here so it sits up, you know, like you don't want it to go like this. You want it to sit up like that, right? So... Anyways, here's the trees. Doesn't matter. This this tree, carving is layers, right? So you have to layer things. Let me see if I can get this mic a bit better. So you got this tree and then this tree in the in behind. We'll do the details later. So a tree stump. Tree stump. Um, yeah, tree stump. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Who cares? 
So now I was talking with my buddy Larry Dibbs. It's good for you beginning wood carvers or artists to have somebody that um, like like minded person that you can talk to and show them a picture of. And what should I carve up here? See, I was going to do a river here, paint it blue and white, make it and paint these trees green. But I think since I'm having fun, I'll carve a wood spirit up here and kind of make it like a I don't know, like a smoky. It will be a wood spirit, but a smoky wood spirit. And, you know, like I say in lots of my videos, once you get that nose to pop off and you get the eyebrows up here, let me draw it on quick. So I'll zoom in here. You always start off with your center line, okay? So you got to think you don't have that much room, so you don't want a big, thick nose. You kind of just, uh, even that nose is a little bit thick. So once I'm going to carve this out, show you guys once you get this nose to pop off and your eyebrows raised up and it deeper inside here okay so i'm going to show you i'm going to remove all this wood here i'm not going to give this start with a forehead or nothing right so this move once you remove this wood you get your eyebrows top eyebrows and your nose and then you can carve any kind of face you want really you know it's just it's experimenting so let's um do this I will uh, film real time. Okay, so the fad's going, so let's go across the eyebrows first. Okay, now the nose. Now underneath the nose. Okay, see that? Now let's remove some of this wood underneath the eyebrows, along the side, and under the nose. Okay, look at that, your nose sticks off. See that? Now let's slope this nose back. Like this. There's your nose, there's your eyebrows, that quick. You can do anything you want to do. So, you know, I want to make this bridge of the nose. It's pretty flat to the face. There's not much depth there. I'm going to carve, carve in here a little bit deeper. Along the side of the nose. And I'm going to use the... This is my go-to burr right here. I love this burr. I'm going to use the tip of it and do a thinner cut. And that's how you get your nose to stick off. So this is going to be kind of like a smoky spirit. Larry's idea. Um, I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it, but let's see here. Like, um, his eyebrows, let's give him these kind of eyebrows like this. Let's just make a fun spirit. Who cares, right? Have a good time. Carve deeper. Okay, 
so there's the outside of his mustache. Now, I guess I'll draw it on for you guys. And I'm just going to follow these lines. So that will be his mustache right here. Okay, so now you gotta remove this wood inside of the mustache and the outside to make the mustache seem elevated off the face. Down here, okay, so down here it was digging in. So when it was digging in and creating a gully, just go really light over it and, and fade that gully out. Okay, there's his mustache, right? Let me clean this up a bit here. Nose sticks off, his mustache. Okay, so let's do some uh, eyebrows. Let me clean up this table for a second here. So we want it to be like smoke, kind of. Give him some cheekbones, okay? This is kind of like Japanese wind right here. Cheekbones. Yeah. 
see that? I cut up when his beard should get cut up here when his beard should be coming down. That's okay, who cares? Take the mustache lower around the nose. Give him a bottom lip. Take down his mustache again. You know, this is just to give you guys ideas. <sighs> okay, let's press pause. Okay, so there you go. Like, I know I got carried away. But what, like I said, once you get that nose cut out and the eyebrows popped out, you can do anything you want. It doesn't need to have a mustache. You can do a happy face. You can do a sad face. So there's some Japanese wind stuff up there. Just have fun. And, you know, try and keep, see this, the, the mustache there, see the two lines going up in a, in a wave. That's kind of like smoke. I don't think I did it on the other side. Yeah, I did. And I was just carving super fast. So what I need to do off camera is I need to continue these smooth lines in here. And I need to take, oh yeah, let's give you a full visual of this. I need to take down all this wood in here. And this cottonwood bark's not that strong. So you see here, I got that much. I still probably got about an inch and a half left. So I need to remove all this wood in here. Because, you know, if you get longer ones, it needs to catch inside the thing, right? You need to have a channel for it to catch. So I'll do this. I'll finish carving all this off camera. And then let's do some, uh, and I'll touch up the wood spirit and do his nostrils. And then let's do some details on the trees. Okay. So. Now let's talk about doing some details on the tree like a pine tree um, I just quickly sanded it with some sandpaper I scuffed it up now what, what trees you know another thing before I talk about detailing the trees you try and make sure everything's proportionate like you know so this trees overlap this tree and it kind of looks fine underneath there you know and you got a big hole deep spot negative space in there where the trees kind of bend and stuff like that you just try and make it look proportionate before you start doing the details in the trees. Okay, so we got these, we got these, we got all these. What burr am I going to choose? So burrs come in all different shapes and sizes. You know, you got typhoon burrs, you got saber tooth burrs, you got my favorite, you got the cuts all burrs, you got um, these kind of ch cheap Chinese three cutting burrs. These things are awesome, but they don't stay sharp for long. Um, you got metal working burrs. You got aluminum working burrs like these. These are great for hardwoods. See the th the flutes on there? Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, like trees can come in many different... I can just scratch it up, make it look like they're trees, but I think I kind of want to make it like there's big branches. 
So what I'm going to do is maybe use this uh, aluminum cutting. This No, this is a cheap Chinese burr to separate the branches first. Um, I'll draw it on and show you guys. So these burrs come in sets of five or six, even ten. They come in different sizes. They're good, they're good for stops and starts. I don't really like these burrs for removing wood, but I like them for um, like doing stops and start cuts. It's hard to explain, but that's more of a whittling term, um, a knife carving term. So let's get a pen. So how do I want these trees to be, the branches? So we'll go like this. This, this is probably the most simple way to do it. And we'll just kind of... Uh, Overlap them like this. Okay. So you see that? Kind of like fish scales. And with the other side, we'll do a different way. We'll kind of do it like um, just keep bringing it out from, from out of the center of the tree. Kind of, sort of. Anyways, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the burr in one of these burrs in my Dremel. And I'm going to go along and cut these straight lines and I'll put another burr to remove the wood to make these branches seem elevated. Okay, this was a kind of a dull one in here. So, So this So I'll show you me trying to remove the wood with this. It doesn't work that good. It's, this is more like using a knife with a Dremel because it doesn't work good up the stairs like going against the grain it doesn't work. So I'll show you. So this would be going up the stairs. You see, and you get little pieces like this breaking off. So it's best to take your time, switch the burrs, and um, find something that will work good for you. I got this uh, cut saw. This is the taper burr. So I'll go along and just kind of remove the wood underneath each branch. Carry on. So I think this is the cut saw taper burr. It's the silver one, so that would be the normal one. Okay. See that? So now what I, since I got this burr on, I'm going to give the tree trunk some textures too.
Now, same for this side. Go down one side. Come down the other side. Okay, so I'll look inside here. I'll see there's a weird cut there, so I'll kind of clean that up. I did a lead D, good enough for me. Now let's do the little thing things. Okay, so there you go. What's going on down here? Doesn't matter. So these are metal working burrs. These are, sorry, these are aluminum cutting burrs. I'm missing a couple out of this set and I can't find the one that I really like to use. <sighs> There's two missing out of here. These are in my Amazon store too. These are awesome. These burrs are awesome, awesome, awesome for hardwood. Okay. So this one is, it's like a flute, whatever it's called, a cylinder. It's got cutters on the bottom of it. See that? So what I do, this is the shorter one. And these sets, you get usually get two. I want to take a quick second here. I might as well. This video is going to be long. Don't care. The difference between metal working burrs. These are aluminum cutters. See, see, let's get some better lighting here. This microphone's close enough. Total unpro. Don't care. Not a pro carver, not a pro filmmaker. These are aluminum cutting burrs. See the sh shafts, the flutes? They're bigger. These metal working burrs. These are the metal working burrs. These are the aluminum working burrs. These are really good for removing lots of wood on hardwood. These are good for like um, slower carving. You know, um, this is what I started out using these ones. They got more cuts in them. See, there's little more things. Just because there's more cut, they're cross cuts. Just because there's more cuts doesn't mean they remove wood faster. These aluminum wor working burrs are the burrs you want to get to remove lots of wood. If you don't have access to the cut soles or saber tooth in Amazon, they sell them on eBay too, but don't be confused between the two metalworking aluminum. Okay. So put this away, um, find this one. There's usually a longer one like this, but it's not in here. I can't find it. And I got to, Carry on with the show, and I got so many sets of them. Carry on with the show, put this on, and start doing some little detail cuts on these branches. Yep. Okay, so the burr is in. And um, let's just start doing it. You try and make them go all the same, right? So here's one branch. So I want them all to be swooshing the same way, not like cut all everywhere, this angle, that angle. It's just this. this is, can't speak. This is the way I do it, and it's just my opinion.
make it a little bit tricky inside here. Don't care. Turn your piece around so it flows nice. Okay, look at your piece. Find some spots that you missed. There's your first tree and our second tree. I'm going to go down one side and come down the other side. One thing I do with chainsaw carving, and this can relate to Dremel carving, you know, so you got you got, got one big branch or you can do one cut just as your guidance so you can try and keep everything the same shape. Watch. So there's my guiding cut. Again, there's my guiding cut. Inside here, I'm just going to kind of, oops, There you go. Think we're golden, pony boy. Let's have a break. Sign your pieces. Okay. So there's your trees. I think at this point, you know, you want to drill the hole for your incense stick.
to get in there and you want it to be like this so it's always a good reminder to keep yourself room for a hole there so you see that these are i don't know if these are in my amazon store but these are wall tile cutter bits see them they're just straight straight um they're like the roto zip bit but these you get these on amazon just type in um one eighth wall tile cutter bits and i got one in here it's a little bit bigger than the the stick size because this is a dollar store one and the girl that i'm giving this to i'm giving this to my uh but my best friend tim's wife because she one of my original ones when I first started wood carving, she has it. She she loves it so much. She uses it all the time. So I figured I figured I wanted to give her an upgraded one this Christmas. So this one's a little bit thicker than that stick because she buys the good incense, and I'm sure the sticks are a little bit thicker than this little thing. So, anyways, I'm gonna hold this up at an angle, not straight down. You need to, you know, anyways. I'll get it done. Okay, there you go. Put it in there. So it's pretty straight. Make sure you drill the hole in straight. There you go. <laughs> now it's time to do some painting or something. I got to find some green paint for these trees. Okay, so I think at this point you could be done with it. You could oil it, put some little burns in there with your wood burner. If you got a torch, torch it a bit. But I want to. Uh, add some paint just to give it some more um, character so I'll paint these trees green and I'll, I got some uh, brown paint for the um, for the tree trunks so let's do uh, we got a carving fusion paint tray this is pretty dark green so what I'm going to be doing here is um, this is just dollar store acrylic paint all the paints that I got here is just dollar store stuff um, How about I get these trees painted and then I'll be back so I can listen to music. Before any of you say anything about this piece, I'll say it for you. Oh, he effed it up. Why did he do green? Why did he do green all down here? Okay, so, well, I just might have effed it up. But we're going to fix it. Well, not fix it. This is what I do. It's like a black wash, but it's a Minway, Minwax poly shade wash. What color is this? French. Mission Oak. So what I'm going to do is put on the Dr. Liz safety gloves. Wipe this on. Let it sit upside down for a bit so it all drips out. And then I'm going to wipe it off with this. Yep. Let's see if it works. Don't care if it doesn't. Because you know what? How are you going to learn if you don't try? If you don't try new things, everything's going to be repetitive. My suggestion to you, try new things. So with this poly shade, I haven't, this is the last can I have. Because I got rid of all, lots of stuff from my carving room because we're doing renos here. I can even open this thing. Holy jeez. Always some bullshit. Sorry for the language. Okay, with this poly shade, you want to mix it up really good because the color likes to sit in the bottom. The color likes to sit in the bottom of it. So I'll continue to mix this up really good for another minute. Okay, so it's a carving fusion paint mixer right here, slash hammer, once was a screwdriver. Okay, so here we go. Let's do the trees first. Uh, yes, I'm a waster, meaning I put on too much stuff sometimes, and, um, well, it just drips all over the place, and, well, that's just the way I do it. I just get shit done. This stuff, when it's warm out, it actually cures pretty quick. So sometimes you have to be in a rush. Like, I'm always, I don't know why I can never take my time, but I'm always in a rush to get things done. Okay, so do we get all there? Get all, you know, spin the piece around 
in different lights, like because sometimes you might miss some spots, and there's nothing nothing worse um, when you think you're done your piece and you've noticed you've missed some spots. So this would be just like a black wash. Black wash is, <clears throat> excuse me, like uh, Just Cry Rob does it quite often. You just mix up some black paint and some uh, whatever you want to do. You put it on the piece and then you wipe it off and it doesn't make it look so uh, new and shiny. See? Okay, so I'll get this all done. Actually, my, this video is probably going to be so long now, it doesn't matter. And uh, this piece is going to be dark. Because if I had lighter poly shade here, I would have used it. But I didn't. So you sometimes just got to use what you got, right? Okay, so it's pretty well all on there. Look, I even had I even had extra to do the back, which kind of makes a mess, but whatever. So let's look around. Get your cap, put your cap on this. Let's look around, see if we missed any spots. Nope. Um, that hole in there. Don't forget to keep that clear for your incense thing. So let's just. Uh, I'm gonna wipe these trees quick. In case it doesn't dry on there but then I'm gonna okay so I'm gonna take five I'm gonna turn this upside down and let all the stuff drip out I'll let all the poly shade drip out of it all right I'll be back forget it I got sandpaper on here it's emery cloth and I'm just dosing the sandpaper with this stuff I'm gonna hook it up to my Dremel and get inside here and you'll get some some more uh, higher higher points. Turn your Dremel down really low when you're doing this because you don't want to fry your Dremel. Okay, here it is. There's the incense thing sticking out. I got to let this dry a little bit more before I burn this because you don't want it sticking in there. Um, let's see here. So there's the green paint that I put on the face. This gives an old kind of rustic look. There's the wind on the sides. It's nice and smooth. Everything's smooth. And the trees and then the brown paint on the bottom. You can't even really notice it. So I got to let this dry before I burn the incense because you don't want the ashes sticking in here. And another thing with a piece like this, what do I got here? I got this uh, clear satin. I think a uh, incense burner would probably be good shiny because, well, no, sorry, I just adjusted my mic. Shiny doesn't, um, you know, you can wipe off shiny stuff easier than you can matte stuff. It's just stuff doesn't stick to it as easy. But uh, once, this is, once this is dry, I'm not going to film. I'm going to give it a couple coats of this. And then we'll try this. But in the meantime, I'm going to carve an owl on an old tree. See the owl? Boop. It's only like noon here, so might as well. Okay, no big surprises on this video. I carved this owl really quick as an incense burner. You see, you put the incense down here. So this one will be flowing up. It's for like these kind of incense. Um, I carved a hole in the back so that so that's like where my finger is. The smoke can go up and it can come out where the owl is in there. But you have to fill this up. I didn't want to have to drill a hole. Sorry. I didn't want to have to drill a hole because, well, I could have drilled the hole and not had to do all this. But this is just a piece of tin uh, I had left over from when I had a roofing company. I cut it. I got all these little holes in here. I'm going to do this. 
and I'm going to friggin nail it down in all those little holes with these nails. I don't have any shorter ones with this. And also, might as well show you guys now, I made this little pan thing so, you know, you can put your thing on here and put it inside there. Yeah, okay. Ooh, okay. So you see that's working. It's pretty well fireproof. And we got this one going. So there you go, everybody. Hope it can give you an idea. That's what these videos are really about. Not saying, look what I can do, because this is anybody can do this kind of stuff. And uh, it makes fantastic, fantastic Christmas presents. Hope you're all good. Carbon Fusion, over and out. That stinks in here.